Okay, so for this first section of uh, videos, we're going to talk a little bit about um, text density. So we're going to kind of start with this course. We kind of try and go through the foundations of everything. So the first thing to talk about is textile density. And what is textile density? Basically, textile density, um, in reference to an object or to an asset in your world, is how much resolution, um, how much tex texture resolution is represented on a mesh in game, okay? Um, and there's a ton of information on this and there's a ton of different um, mindsets on this. My uh, general opinion about this is that this is a very great guide to follow, um, but every production I've been in um, that, you know, we, that you tend to, uh, when you try and ship stuff, you, things start to get kind of a little bit out of whack. So it's a great, great thing to try and maintain, um, but sometimes it doesn't always stay that way. Basically, texel density um, is a way to calibrate and measure your object's resolution in comparison to other objects in the world. Okay, That's a very fancy way of saying is if you have a rock, rock A, next to tree A, the texture map, the UV map that's on there, will be displaying the same amount of resolution from that rock to that tree. Okay. So if you have a big wall, same thing. That big wall is going to have the exact same resolution as a piece of machinery sitting on the floor next to it. Or at least that's the hope. Okay. Now, how do we determine that? Um, we determine that a number of different ways. Primarily, the most common way is to base it off of the character scale. So depending on your game, depending on your pipeline, your character scale is going to be primarily based off of a 2048 um, texture resolution um, and multiple 2048s at that. Um, character resolution tends to be obviously so substantially higher than the environment resolution, but it's a good unit of measure. Um, one of the things that uh, you'll actually want to make sure you're doing when you're setting up all your units and that kind of stuff is to make sure that whatever engine you're using that your unit setup is corresponding to that. So for this first set of, like for this first little lecture, um, we're going to talk about the unit scale in relation to um, UDK, which is not Unreal Development, Unreal Engine 4, but UDK. Um, and then we're going to migrate this process over to Unreal Development Kit 4. The idea behind this being is that if you follow standard texture resolution scale um, and grid snapping, your objects can scale likewise with your engine. Okay, so we'll and that'll make sense as we go more into the videos. Um, so the first thing that I'm trying to do here is I'm setting up my grid snaps here, making sure everything is set up and aligned. One of the things that you're going to find when, you know, as you're doing this stuff, you tend to want to work in whole numbers. Um, it's something that's absolutely very important. It makes it much easier to use inside the engine um, where you can. Another thing too that you want to be very mindful of, you know, and again we're going to talk about this when we go in to this, is that your models um, get used to having them onto um, onto the grid. Okay, we're going to be using the grid a lot, um, especially for game art. Um, basically, the grid grid's your friend. Stop fighting with it. Make sure you use it. Um, basically, the what you want to try and um, think about is if it's a wall piece or some type of pillar or something that's got to snap around. You want these uh, the extents the the outmost extents of the objects or anything that's it's going to snap against to snap onto a grid. Okay, um, Unreal. Uh, four, I believe, uses centimeters. Um, for the sake of simplicity, keep everything inside a max of um, one default value of one, unless, um, and then you can switch it over to centimeters if you'd like. Um, which actually, I would probably recommend because it's going to help you if you're migrating your stuff across other platforms, and it also helps because most every other country in the world uses centimeters, um, other than the U.S. And it's centimeters is just a nice, even number to use. Okay, but you can see here 
using those round, those full integer numbers, no float, no uh, decimal point numbers, um, everything will snap onto the grid, right? Everything just kind of works. So that's a really important thing to remember when we're setting up our block out assets. And again, we do this. So as you can see here, everything will just snap. Okay. And when we take the objects into Unreal, this is going to be very important. Okay. So this is um, kind of the method that we're going to follow the most in this first part of these uh, very large serials, uh, series of tutorials is the idea of prop snapping and um, modular asset design. And again, we'll take this into varying degrees of complexity. Complexity. I kind of like to start all my tutorials off with fairly basic things. Um, one of the advantages to actually doing um, modular design is for asset culling. Basically, asset culling is if this is your care, your camera, um, your game character or camera. Anything that that camera frustrum room doesn't see, it's going to cut out. Okay. And as you can see here, we're only saving a few assets, but this is a very quick way for your objects to be able to drop in and out of memory or in and out of the frame, so you don't have to actually translate the pick uh, the. Uh, vertices in camera if you're not seeing them. So one of the advantages to modular design is that it's very efficient for rendering. You can drop stuff, you can instance stuff, which is a uh, rendering saves saves you on uh, calls for new objects and whatnot. So it's there's a lot of really cool things that come from modular prop design, and it's very popular, especially with the Unreal editor um, and the Unreal Engine, and how popular that whole workflows come. Not every engine utilizes that. If you're using an older engine, they may be more BSP based, which is binary space partition. Um, and a lot of that stuff, they use props, but there's probably not so much prop modeling. Um, you know, and again, this is, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about as many workflows as I can, but again, every engine's different and every company works a little differently within their engine. So uh, it's important to realize that as well.